You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. All right, Josue, let's go through our new comic day stack. We have a lot to review. I know. Maybe we've gone too far. Well, let's see. Marvel, of course. DC. I got Image. Dark Horse. Black Mask. Boom. IDW. Aftershock. Vault, of course. Mad Cave. Oni. Valiant. Scout. Magma. Behemoth. Wow, that's a lot. Well, all we need now is a name for our show. We need a name for a show about reviewing comic books every week. Something clever, but not too clever. Like a pun? It's kind of cheesy. Yeah, it's something that seems funny at first, but we might regret later on as an impulsive decision a few dozen episodes in. Yeah, we'll think of something. Join Keith and Osway for We Have Issues, a weekly show reviewing almost every new comic released each week. Available on Geek Elite Media and wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's time to take that journey, that journey into mystery as we talk about 2005's Fantastic Four. Hey, Ian. Hi, Mitch. It's an interesting venue we're in this evening. Large, blank, white room. So, <laughs> different than our normal environment. I don't know how I feel about this, but, you know, it is what it is. It's important. Today was the, the 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 Twitch boycott, the Twitch blackout day, telling Twitch they need to be better. So we That's decided right. to jump in on that because you know what, you need to take care of you need to take care of all your streamers, but you definitely need to take care of the more uh, the more vulnerable streamers that you have out there. All right, so like you got to do better, Twitch. There you go. So we are participating. We are not doing our show live on Twitch. But we are doing our recorded episode for our podcast. And to join us to talk about the Fantastic Four once again is Garrett. Evening, family. <laughs> How's it going, Garrett? Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. How is everybody? Oh, we're doing well. Good. Here I am. Yeah. I burned my mouth on a burrito earlier. <laughs> I mean, that kind of sucks. I woke up this morning. You ever had like an inflamed taste bud? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I woke up this morning with one of those and it's driving me insane. So like, I feel you on the burnt, on the, the, the burrito burn. You know, when I was a kid, they used to call that a lie bump. You got something you want to tell us? Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, even with you know your mouth getting burned by a burrito, you still had burrito. Like so, that's still great. Two burrito. Ooh, look at that. Two burrito. Oh, oh fancy. <laughs> but they were tiny, so. I mean, well, still delicious, probably. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, we're gonna get into 2005's Fantastic Four, starring Jessica Alba, Ian Gruford. Chris Evans, Michael Chiklis, and I know the name of Doctor Doom, Julian McMahon. But I'm bum. Directed by Tim Story. Uh, before this, Tim Story had directed the Barbershop movie. So I would I, I remember in 2005 thinking I can I can trust this because like he knows how to do an ensemble film, and I liked those Barbershop movies. <laughs> I. I applaud your faith. <laughs> uh, I think that's a little bit of a uh, a, a preview of how Ian's going to feel about this movie later. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more before we get all the way into it. I didn't hate it. Okay. I didn't right. hate. I, I actually had some fun with it. Um, yeah, this was one of the the better watches we've had recently. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you guys just watch blade and you're saying this is one of the better ones well we just watched electra so this well, that is like- definitely better <laughs> oh okay yep uh 
All right. So before our end, we're going to get into uh, a little bit of MCU news. There's not a lot out there right now uh, because we talked about the, the new trailers that dropped last week. And then we're going to get into the newest episode of What If to Us. There is a new episode that's out today as we record, but we don't talk about that episode. We're talking about the episode from last week. Uh, and then we'll get into 2005's Fantastic Four. So first first uh, Marvel MCU news that I wanted to talk about is uh, this article from The Wrap says that Marvel Studios is actively searching for a Latino actor to lead the cast of as yet untitled Halloween special that will air on Disney Plus revolving around Werewolf by Night. Now, who has read Werewolf by Night? I yeah, read, I didn't think so. Uh, I, I tried. <laughs> and it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just couldn't find more. Oh. So you, Ian, being a big Moon Knight fan, know that this is where Moon Knight first made his appearance was in Werewolf by Night. Did you read nice. that issue? Uh, yeah, it was actually the one that, that I was able to get. Because <laughs> I was like, ooh, they look kind of cool. And um, <clears throat> that was also, I feel like every time Moon Knight comes up, I have to say I don't know that much about Moon Knight. I'm just <laughs> a very big fan of his memes. <laughs> 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 so getting that out there, making sure we're all on the level. Um, I went, ooh, they look kind of cool and read about Moon Knight and then was like, I should read more about them. And then just never did. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I had never read anything from Werewolf by Night, so I have no idea where it's going to go. But I'm assuming they might use it to introduce Moon Knight, or are they going to use Moon Knight to introduce Werewolf by Night? Ooh, good call. I feel like it's fitting, given the request that they're asking for, to say "Por qué no los dos." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I, I also find it interesting that it's just a Halloween special. It's not going to be a whole series. It's not going to be a movie. I mean, I hope that as a special, it's going to be like a little bit longer and then it would be like a movie. What if it turned out to be like <clears throat> a yearly special? So they only did them once a year, but they always came out around Halloween. I could see that. That could be fun. I could be down for that one. Yeah. But it, it probably wouldn't always be Werewolf by Night. It would probably be the other horror characters from Marvel. Like what other? Morbius? <laughs> Morbius, Dracula. Man Spider? Uh, well, I guess they can't do Morbius because Morbius is over at Sony. They already There's already that movie coming out. Mm. You can't do Man Spider. Can they do... Well, they can't do Spider-Man, so why can't they do Man Spider? Because it's man, man spider's part of Spider Man's world. Man. <laughs> yeah. If I remember correctly, they they announced like Sony like put it out there like with their deal with with Marvel, they have like access to like some two hundred characters that are exclusively Spider Man characters. Two uh, hundred? Something like that. Yeah. That's so Dang. many. That's just Spider-Man stuff. Like, I don't know how exactly you, you split. I mean, obviously, like, characters like Rhino is a Spider-Man character. You leave it in Spider-Man. But, like, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how else you divvy up other characters. Yeah, I need. I'm, <laughs> I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if only Sony is allowed to use those 200 characters, A, Start cranking out movies, damn it. And <laughs> B, don't let the Venom writer write all of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean it. That was oh, that was another story that came out today was that uh Venom Let There Be Carnage got its uh um rating today. It's MPA rating, or at least they announced what the rating's gonna be. It's gonna be PG thirteen again. Ow. That's a mistake. <laughs> I mean, th the first movie was a mistake, so. But then you get Carnage involved and you're not going to let him just like do his Carnage thing. You're going to rein him into PG-13. I mean, did they not see how well su the Suicide Squad did? 
Like that was rated R for a good reason. Right. Right. Also, I have a quick question for you. Like, I know that we don't really talk about DC on this podcast, but I need to know, did you get Tarantino like vibes from the Suicide Squad at all? There were definitely some like grindhouse vibes from the Suicide Squad. And that's like Tarantino's Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez like go to thing as of late. See, and I can understand like a Rodriguez vibe to it, especially towards the end, right? Right. I I had somebody tell me that they didn't really enjoy it because it felt too much like a Tarantino film and they don't really enjoy Tarantino films. And then I was just very confused because there were no fire hydrants of blood. <laughs> <laughs> um they actually had a very like conservative use of the F word for like in oh yeah grand, like in the grand scheme of things they could have gone they could have leaned a lot harder into that if you're going for the tarantino vibe and the dialogue was nowhere near as good as a tarantino movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> that being said i didn't hate it i had a lot of fun with this one it was way better than the first one but i was just very confused like am, am i missing something somewhere or are they kind of dumb no yeah. i agree it was it was i i loved it yeah, I thought much I thought better a, than the first. I, yeah, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun, but and 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 I, if if I was going to compare it to any Tarantino movie, I would say it's like Inglorious Bastards. Like that's essentially yeah. the, that that that'd be the only thing that I would chalk it up to, especially with the character cards popping up, the character cards and the the war feel, and you know, putting a team together. Yeah, I don't. know. Uh, the like when they said it, the first thing that popped in my uh, popped in my mind was Kill Bill. Yeah, and I, I mean, was like, "That there's nothing. Nope, <laughs> no. <laughs> Just all right. We're done. We're we're done with that conversation. You don't understand movies." <laughs> <laughs> and then I instantly felt like a like a movie snob, and then I felt bad about myself. But <laughs> anyway, that's that's that little tangent from me. We can continue with our actual topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no. So I, 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 I'm interested to see what they do with a Werewolf by Night property on Disney Plus. What that could mean, what that could look like, uh, and it, I think Garrett might have hit it on the head that 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 might if they do it at Halloween, they might be might be a backdoor like pilot for Moon Knight, or at least a special appearance. It, have they had a release date for Moon Knight yet? I don't know I, I mean all we've seen is uh oscar isaac like putting up on his instagram like him doing stunt work for it that and metal gear solid because he's playing solid snake oh really i, I, I hadn't heard that movie. oh yeah i'm on board for that <laughs> i feel like he's double dipping though like both characters would be would be training the, almost exactly the same you just have to learn to fight with a cape as moon knight yeah but then like <laughs> I don't know if he's actually going to be if he's going to be Solid Snake. Never mind, it's Solid Snake. It's not the boss. Okay, my joke is rendered moot. We can move forward. <laughs> it's the same person. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a video game podcast yet? We not anymore. We did when we first started. Mm. I'm gonna make one. It's just called. Metal Gear? Question mark. <laughs> uh, Moon Knight. All they have right now is 2022 as a release date. Yeah, that's all I could find. That's why I was asking. Hopefully, you got. I was hoping you had some deep digging. Found something. No. Mining for gold. Oh no. M- Mitch always knows. Mitch always <laughs> has information that I don't know how he finds it until he's like, "Oh, did you see this?" And then like sends me a link, and it's like. Who told you? How did you find that? And he's like, oh, I just kind of did. Uh, it's the the perils of running the network. <laughs> just that stuff all the time. Is that what it is? Or did Marvel actually reach out to you and they won't return my phone call? Is that what this is? It might be a little bit of that one. Is, is there favoritism amongst... <laughs> <laughs> amongst podcast hosters are they afraid that i'll actually fight them 
<laughs> gonna throw those hands dude, i'll do it come here <laughs> I'm, ripped. I'm ripped you can't see me right now but i'm flexing don't blow my cover gang i'm i'm so big dude i'm like terry cruz kind of big over here you don't want those problems marvel <laughs> Uh, all right. The second story I wanted to talk about is director Nia DaCosta, who just had a uh, big box office opening with her new Candyman reboot, revival, sequel movie, uh, is also the director of The Marvels, which is going to be the Captain Marvel sequel movie. Uh, the Marvels implies that we were going to be getting Captain Marvel with Brie Larson, uh, probably another Captain Marvel in the Janice Bell character, uh, maybe Blue Marvel, who we discussed a lot during WandaVision, and uh, most likely Ms. Marvel, who is on, who is going to have her own show on Disney+. Plus. Um, so Nia DaCosta is going to write that, or direct that. She originally went into Marvel and pitched a Galactus X-Men team-up movie. Where Storm and Scott Summers were going to be a couple, and they were going to go up, and they were going to team up with Galactus, or at least cross over. Team up with or against? I, it it really doesn't say. It kind of just says team up with, or it just says X Men te- Galactus team up film. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> I mean, I'll. I'll, I'll entertain it. That sounds like it could be fun. But if they're teaming up with Galactus, who's the threat? Phoenix? <laughs> I mean, that's a good threat. That is a very good threat. Like, helicopter flying very low. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is very loud. No, but. Okay. It was not surprising. Wow. That was like, it shook my windows. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so like you're fighting like the Phoenix or are you fighting like, I don't, who else, what other bad guy would that you know, involve Galactus? So that would involve like a celestial entity <laughs> and the X-Men. Maybe, maybe, maybe all the Fantastic Four go evil and the X-Men are like, well, let's get Galactus to help us defeat the Fantastic Four. Like it's worked in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so you Galactus regularly loses to a dude that's on fire. <laughs> like he should be dead. <laughs> He's halfway there. <laughs> and a man that's made of rocks. Just <laughs> I don't know. I the Fantastic Four struggles to catch my attention as characters. Uh, oh, the I, we're not even there yet. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, obviously, I'm super excited about uh, her Marvels movie, uh, and what that could entail. Because I, and I said this before, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Blue Marvel in the on this big screen or TV show or whatever at some point. I think that's a very cool character that's been introduced in the last ten years. That's supposed to have this huge history background in all of marvel universe like they've given him a, a retro retro con retcon. retcon thank you <laughs> <laughs> retcon uh history of being there but not being there um but yeah so uh nia DaCosta, I'm, I'm interested I, i'm there for it i can't wait to see your movie so I, and i'm guessing a galactus I think we might see a little bit of, or at least a hint of Galactus in uh, Eternals in November. I can see that. Yeah, that would make sense to me. So with Marvels, did they mention anything with... Uh, Longshot? Uh, no. I, Longshot would be good. I know, I know you know I love Longshot, but <laughs> no, the gal that was in uh, Wanda Vision. Oh, yes. Her, her two Photon. Yeah. Yeah. Is she going to be in that too? Yes, she is. Okay. Good. I didn't hear that part. Monaco Rambo. Oh, yeah, I didn't say it, but... There I you go. Have. She's a character that I want to see more of, like, on the screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just because she seems rad. So, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that's like I said, not not much for news as of late, but I'm sure as uh, Shang-Chi comes out this weekend, there's going to be plenty more to talk about. That's next week's episode. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Mitch and I are telling everybody, get out of the room. <laughs> get out of our weird white void that we're in. <laughs> there's got to be a night mode for this. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking the exact same thing. It is pretty bright. It's oppressively bright. <laughs> we actually have to log in to find it. I'm not doing that. <laughs> now let's talk about what if. So spoilers if you haven't watched what if episode three. What if the Avengers had died? Or what if Earth's Mightiest had died, I believe is what it's called. Something like that. Uh Honestly, the episode should be called "What If uh, Hank you Pym's did. Daughter Was Killed." <laughs> you did say spoilers at the beginning, right? I did. Okay. What did y'all think? I I thought it was the best of the three so far. Best of the, I, oh, really? It was, it was my favorite out of the three. I I liked the one with uh, T'Challa being uh, Star Lord. It it just it felt too campy, too happy. It definitely it, was more camp than the others. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. It, it they're paying an homage to Chadwick Boseman, and I appreciate that. It just it didn't. It kind of felt a, felt a little forced. Oh. But with this one, I, everything that was happening, I was like. What what is going on? What, how is how is this happening? And then when I got to the, the apex, I was like, "Oh, wow! Okay, that's good on you." <laughs> we didn't get to talk too much about the other episodes last week because uh, Jessica hadn't watched the episodes yet, right, Ian? Correct. So uh, you know, I guess we could backtrack a little bit. Would you? I mean, what were you, what was your favorite part of uh, the first episode or second episode? Was that? Funny? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't. I, I will admit to you, it has been a blur of like the last two weeks that I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, I remember enjoying the animation out of them. Yeah. Um, the whole thing. The I think the the scene where Peggy Carter's flying around fighting literal planes uh, <laughs> was kind of like way too badass. Like it might be one of the best action sequences that Marvel has given us like to date because she's just murdering people with that shield. Just like she comes oh, yeah. in through the, the windshield of the bomber and she's just taking the flat edge of the shield and just beating that guy in the face. With it. <laughs> just like, Bleh! And then she jumps out of that and lands on some like Nazi fighter plane and she breaks open that thing and then beats the guy up and then throws him out the back. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I'm, I understand that Captain America murdered people and just like absolutely ended them when he needed to. But that felt, I'm not going to say excessive, but like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> She's angry the Americans didn't join World War II first. Right, fair. Back but like her, her, her early, earlier. <laughs> um, but the, I remember I remember watching that and going, Oh yeah, that's pretty that's pretty badass. Like I'm <laughs> into that. Can I have a whole show that's just this? I don't need a story. I just need Captain Carter just fighting people forever. And I think that's one of my issues with it. It was just they were trying to cram so much into the short time period they have it would have been better with a little bit more time and fleshed out some of the stories it's just like here's this thing she did here's this thing she did here's this thing she did it's like okay slow down i let me take in some kind of a story please i mean they only have so much time yeah. you know, per episode but i i get uh, that that is probably my favorite episode of the three so far like that uh that first episode the captain carter episode and i would love to watch more uh, i have heard people complain that that first episode isn't different enough like it follows the same beats as Captain America, the first Avenger, you know, quite 
closely. So like it doesn't really change anything up too much. Whereas like the T'Challa becomes Storm- Star Lord uh, is quite different. Like changes the entire universe. Oh yeah. Uh, and then now um, the Avengers getting killed like that's that changes up a lot. Like that a lot of things change up in that one. Um, yeah. Like Hank Pym, like <laughs> Hank Pym just going crazy as Yellow Jacket was was so great. His face with the the sunken in eyes and the old Weird crazy beard. man hair, <laughs> crazy was, man hair. Yeah. As soon as he, they showed up, I was like, "This is the what if I want. This is <laughs> this is the craziness I want to see." Honestly, I'm surprised he didn't use any like growing uh, powers throughout the whole thing. See, I, I think within the, the movies, it was that didn't show up until later. So they were still going with the timeline that he hadn't come up with that yet. He was just u- still using the shrinking. Oh, that's he was, true. He was very upset that his daughter was gone. Very. So like, I already know this stuff. I'm going to make this stuff badass. I don't need to worry about anything else right now. <laughs> just this plan. How terrifying. Like. I don't know if a bigger yellow jacket would be any scarier because one way or another, he's going to kill you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But f- when he gets tinier, that's just more threatening to me. So, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Especially the way he takes out the Hulk. Like, it's very <laughs> reminiscent of the theory that everybody was throwing out there for <laughs> Ant Man and <laughs> 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 So, uh, yeah, taking out the Hulk by going in there and, like, exploding his heart. Like, honestly, I don't know if that would – I mean, that would work at the Hulk. Like, he's supposed to be able to come back from anything. He explodes and turns into that mist, which makes me think, well, what if he, like, reconstitutes himself <laughs> after that? Or just every particle of Hulk just becomes another little tiny Hulk? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Angry mist. <laughs> um, it's like that. That's a question that people tend to ask me when they find out that I do like this podcast or that I like comic books in general. They're like, "So how do you kill the Hulk?" And my answer is always like, "Do you want the actual answer or my answer?" So I want your answer first. Okay, so my answer is you get a big adamantium grid. And grid. Yeah, just a big grid of adamantium. You just push it through him ah. to a point to separate him out into a bunch of little cubes so he can't pull himself back together. Okay. But then, I, then they're like, that seems really impractical. I'm like, yeah, because the real answer is you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just you, you got to kill him with love. Or shoot him <laughs> into the sun and hope he doesn't find his own planet to like... <laughs> radicalize and come back to earth with <laughs> i mean that that was their problem that was their fault in that in that storyline they put him in a ship and sh- shot him in outer space like outer space is the way you kill the hulk there's no oxygen out there for him to breathe if he can't breathe he can't live yeah I so still just put him, him on the moon the you have enough teleporters just teleport him to the moon and leave him there he can't jump back to earth <laughs> Why can't he? <laughs> it's a little far. No, nah, that's the next evolution of the Hulk right there. He's going <laughs> to jump from the moon to punch somebody in the face on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it. Now, they're, the next time they fight, like, the, the, whoever the next, like, big bad is in the comics, the Hulk is going to get thrown to space and he's going to hit the moon before he's out of oxygen and be able to just, like, <laughs> rage jump all the way back at like just under the speed of light because he's so mad and he's gonna just punch him and square in the dome and when (laughs) this cataclysmic event this world ending event of the hulks punching somebody in the face finally clears the villain is still gonna be alive (laughs) (laughs) of course dr doom will still be alive because it would be doom fuck that guy <laughs> you know what would happen to that? He, his jump from the moon would throw the moon off of its course, off of its orbit, and then this, the punch itself would crack the Earth in half. Yep. And then we have the fucking Stark Moon. 
because they have to do something to fix the tides. So Stark put up a big ass satellite that's just a magnet. <laughs> an artificial moon. <laughs> yeah, Stark just builds an artificial moon and he's like, there, I fixed it. But it has the big Stark logo on it because of course it does. Of course it does. <clears throat> and then he's, everybody's like, wow, thanks, Tony Stark. And he's like, don't mention it. Buy my shit. <laughs> of course it'd be a giant neon light too that like, you know, gets powered by the sun so that when it's in the dark side, like it's when it's a, a new moon when there's nothing out, you still see the Stark logo right in the middle of the sky. <laughs> yep. Which brings up a whole new brand of villain where they're like, I'm tired of being marketed to Tony Stark. <laughs> I can't get any sleep. That bright light is so bright. <laughs> yep. And then Matt Murdock over here just like, I don't see it. <laughs> oh. but, but you know what? He could hear it. He could hear like the electrical running through the light. It's, it's like, just like a... Like, like, gzz, 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 yep. Gzz, gzz. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get away from it. You can't turn it off. I would suck. <laughs> <laughs> I want this. <laughs> oh. I need this story. <laughs> That's scary. Um, I'm like Moon Two. That's the name of the the run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moon Two, Death of Moon Knight. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Garrett's onto it. Um, with with that, you know, you had the end of that episode is is very bleak, but with the added like, what if with getting Captain America and Captain Marvel there at the same time to reform the Avengers or start start the Avengers anew, uh, the the fact that it ends that way in like a to to be continued like mode was I thought was very weird. Like I'm expecting it to continue on in that particular world whereas every week we're getting a different world well it looked like they had only found the shield that didn't look like there was any body in there so i'm ex- i was expecting fury to give the shield to captain marvel oh i mean that could happen too i think that i think the body is just lower that's the way it was in the movie too what happens with so if you give a captain <laughs> captain america's shield do they become captain captain marvel <laughs> <laughs> I think you automatically like go up in rank to com- to so, like what's next Gary? to become like major Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Col- Colonel Marvel. <laughs> Captain. Marvel. Yeah, major. Because it's well, she it. was in the Air Force, so I know it's not exactly the same as the Army. Correct. So I think major is next. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, it up. <laughs> then they would have then they would have captains. Ooh. Wait. So it's Captain's America. <laughs> <laughs> so if this going back to what we were talking about earlier, is Sony owned Captain Universe because Spider Man was un- Captain Universe one time? I bet you they do, because it's Peter Parker underneath that. Well, I want to see the Tri Sentinels Captain Universe. Let's go. Nope. Mut- Mutants, Tri Sentinels. <laughs> Get it sure, done. I'm sure somebody at Sony is working on it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking about the animation, though, that is another thing that I, I like the animation, but I also wish they would change it up between episodes. That way, you got a more distinct feel that it is a different world or a different timeline. I thought they were doing that just because it's animated versus the live action that this is a different world. But I see what you're saying about it being one universe between all the different what ifs. Right. I can't wait till the zombies. (laughs) It's coming. So good. It's coming. Anything else? Either one you'd like to say about what if episode three. So, I'm just gonna put it out there. If we're doubling a captain, uh, would it, would it be a major, or would we just jump straight to lieutenant colonel? Because you're just like you're just skipping a rank because you're a double captain. <laughs> no, it's like a pawn that gets to the or uh, the checker piece that gets to the other side, and you get to put a crown on. It's just double. Oh, so, you, so you just get to be king. That's right, King <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs> England is just like, see, I told you. (laughs) 
Uh, oh, all right. Let's talk about Fantastic Four from 2005. Uh, does anybody have memories of going to see this in the theater? Mm-hmm. Vaguely. Vaguely? Yeah. I was I remember- super happy. I was I was super happy about this movie. Like I I for long I wasn't always the biggest Fantastic Four fan. Like I knew the comics, but I never read them really. But I was I always knew that a Fantastic Four movie would work. And I honestly had never seen the 1995 one that we'd already watched. <laughs> but then again, not many people had seen that one because it was made and never released. Yeah. <sighs> Never again will I watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember not hating it, but I think I was kind of nonplussed about it. Okay. It just, I can't remember. It, it, it's been so long and, and so many other Marvel movies in between. That I can't really remember my exact feelings at that, at the walking out of the theater. So my biggest gripes with the movie would definitely be Julian McMahon's Victor Von Doom. Like mm-hmm. I, I really like honestly the 1995 version is is the only one that does the Victor du- Von Doom like the best. <laughs> and that's that's terrible that they did the best. <laughs> but at least it it followed the story from the comics and and he they got the costume right. And then you have Jessica Alba's like super blonde hair. Like we we didn't need to do that. Well, and it also looked like did they digitally bleach her skin? They probably did. And did anybody else notice she had they were a little bit dark, but blue contacts in? Oh yeah. And then the second one it gets even worse with those blue contacts. Oh, yeah. I was I was gonna wait for that one, but <laughs> oh, did everybody watch it on Disney Plus? I did, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, there was something I noticed at the very beginning that I I don't remember if it was there in the theaters or on DVD. It said created by Stanley and Jack Kirby. Has that always been there? I believe it's always been there. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if the the lawsuit they had. I, I I don't know if they had gone back and re-edited some of those intros to put that in there, or if right. it had already been there. Yeah, just something popped out. So, <clears throat> I kind of gave a preview of my opinion of this film before. <laughs> um, again, I didn't hate it. It's one of the better watches we've had recently. The Blade films outstanding from that. Um, but the the things that stood out to me the most is, uh, I mean, Human Torch is still rad. Like, I remember yeah. being little when this movie came out. Uh, came out in 2005 so i was 12 um, okay so i was like hell yeah that guy's awesome <laughs> uh, like he's still rad um the soundtrack was good and uh reed richards is a stick in the mud so <laughs> there we go that's that's <laughs> but this movie the soundtrack i just had to pull it up so i could like make sure i'm not talking on my house here um, this Velvet Revolver taking back Sunday. Uh, Chingy is on this. Um, Chingy, yeah. Uh, wow. Some forty one is on <laughs> is on this soundtrack. Like it's got a good soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has good bands, but when I was listening to it, it's like this sounds like a song I should know, but I do not recognize these songs. Yeah, I mean, in the middle of the so that's fine. No, I'm not sticking them. In. I'll, show you my, I'll show you my playlist. <laughs> but like when when Taking Back Sunday came on, I was just like, oh, oh, I I, I already like this song. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the one thing I didn't I didn't care for. as much as I liked uh, Chris Evans' Human Torch. Like I didn't care for the extreme sports like attitude they gave him but i guess that might have been a a a a, a part of that time of 2005 like oh definitely x games and mountain dew everywhere so there's there's a phrase that has been i i think it's from that like that time period 
uh, that I've recently kind of put into better words. That's just yeehaw, send it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I really, I really feel that with this Human Torch, where he's just like, I could, I, I'm, I set myself on fire, so I'm gonna go do cool stuff, <laughs> like snowboard on fire down a mountain. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Every time Johnny Blaze was, or Johnny Blaze, Johnny Storm was talking. It was the the one liners, the the quips were fantastic. Yeah. Pun intended. Get out. But, <laughs> but the forced uh, hatred between him and Ben Grimm just irritated me through the whole movie. Yeah, if they wanted the more of the little brother like picking on you kind of relationship, they should have worked with that more instead of this like old commanding officer relationship that they try to set up at the beginning. Yeah. If you wanted to play that angle from it, give them a closer relationship where like the the dynamic in there is like, yes, Ben Grimm is the the superior officer in this situation, but like there's a sense of like humor between the two of them. Right. Like, yeah, we know where the line is. He's still the boss, but like I can say some dumb shit and get away with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, one that would have worked out better. One of my absolute favorite scenes is right when they get back from space, and uh, Johnny Storm is standing over uh, Ben Grimm, and he's giving him the speech like the doctors did everything. You know, they they uh, they worked as long as they could, and because we all know, I, I felt as a tip of the hat to the fans that we all know what's supposed to happen. And then they reveal that it didn't happen, and he's just like, "You're still ugly." <laughs> I I don't know why I always love that scene, and that's that's good. That's funny. Like I remember seeing this movie, and then growing up and being like, "That really wasn't that great." And now I go back to it, and I'm like, "That's still not the best thing I've ever seen." It's still not like good, but it's better than I remember. Yeah. Yep. Yep, I agree. Like, there's definitely some, definitely some merit to it, if that's fair. Uh, I also want to say that, is as fake as it looks, I still think that the thing looks great in this, and the fact that oh yeah, his mouth, his like jaw and mouth move, and you know, it's still forming words, is amazing. The only thing I think they should have gave him the eyebrows, like that's the thing that's missing from that yeah. that cost that costume, that prosthetic. <laughs> I mean, you said they should have given him the eyebrows. Yes. Yeah. Because it's almost iconic to the thing. True. Just that one but, like, big mono brow. Yep. <laughs> but it wasn't always there. Was that just the thing in the late nineties, early two thousands, or did that come after the uh, movie? The the eyebrow. The eyebrow yeah. came from. I want to say Walter Walter Simonson in the nineties. No. <laughs> From so, Walter Cronkite. <laughs> so his wife. So. Ben Grimm's wife. Yeah. I, I, honestly, she in the just a quick tangent. In The Walking Dead, that character that she played in the show uh-huh. was one of my favorite characters in the comic book. But when she showed up on screen, like, can you kill her off now? Is it because it took, of what she did to Ben Grimm in this movie? Like, no. But I, I had the same feelings. Like, she's she's just she's the way she treated him after they said they were going to be together forever. It it was just to get to Carrie Washington. By the way, <laughs> yep. Wow. Right. Uh, and when she, at, why was she on the bridge? All of a sudden, oh, the, the bridge scene I absolutely hate because there's just too many things going on that did not need to happen, and they Deus Ex Machina, as you always put it, it's just this after this after this. The dropping the ring, mm-hmm. but the dropping the ring was another one of my favorite parts when he can't pick it up. Yep, <laughs> that was good, but. 
the bridge scene. So Reed has Sue completely strip so that she can get through. And then she gets through, gets past the cops only to meet up with Reed on the other side. (laughs) Why was that necessary? Yeah, there's a lot of like rushed through in this movie. And I think that was, uh, that was because it's still, it was still fresh to do comic book movies, even though Spider-Man had done it well at this point like they were still trying to figure it out um they uh, people i don't think people were st- people were still not taking comic book movies serious yet until you get to uh probably dark knight and uh iron man there's oh wait wait we can make lots of money with this or spider-man 2 makes a whole bunch of money spider-man 3 makes even oh, yeah. more money but that's only because of how well how good spider-man 2 was um but yeah I, it's it's I think it was just still people not taking taking seriously that what what these comic book movies could be. Yeah, I can see that. It is well. How, how is it that the whole family gets from the Baxter Building to the motocross like stadium in a matter of minutes? And why is there a motocross stadium in the middle of New York? Like, is is that a uh, thing? Because yeah. reasons, Mitch. If you have to <laughs> ask why there's a motocross stadium in the middle of New York, obviously you don't get it. Obviously, I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it to you. I mean, from all I know, I I've, never been, I've never been in New York City, but from all I know is that real estate is very like scarce. <laughs> and to have a whole motocross stadium right in the middle, like they don't even have the professional football teams for New York in New York City. Like <laughs> They're in New Jersey. Well, you just smash my book. I was saying, well, usually they'll they take a stadium that's already there and they'll fill it in with dirt for the motocross. But yeah, they they don't have any stadiums there for football. No. Nope. Uh, so for all we know, it could have just been very clever camera angles, and the Baxter <laughs> Building is actually in New Jersey. <laughs> I mean, for all we know, they could just have a whole arena at the bottom of the Baxter Building. They just never showed it to us. <laughs> Did we ever see the lobby of the Baxter building? Yes. I mean, yes. At the, at the beginning. But did we really? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go through and we're going to break this down frame by frame. Buckle in. I hope you didn't have plans for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen the basement. No, there it is. Everybody was in the basement. The yep. basement of the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, that that, that that that's the one that always got me was like how fast they got from the Baxter building to the motocross to, to yell at at Johnny about outing them as superheroes or whatever. <laughs> Which, did he out all of them? He just outed himself. <laughs> I mean, they'd already out themselves on the bridge. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was it was more of just we got to show. Um, you know, Chris Evans making a fool of himself kind of thing. <laughs> well, he had to race that guy with complete ADR. Ooh. Did, did you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> I mean. Backwards hat douche hard. Most noticeable ADR is bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just because his head's turned away from the camera doesn't mean you get to ADR. <laughs> nope, I get to throw in an extra line there. <laughs> hey, that actor Ooh. got to be, you know, got to get another notch up in his his paycheck because of that extra ADR line. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of ADR, did you notice the two Wilhelm screams within three minutes of each other? So I this is the first time I ever noticed the Wilhelm scream in general. I didn't notice that there was two, but I did notice one. Oh yeah, there was two, and they were almost back to back. I wow. think we're gonna say ever like as a whole, and I'm like, Mitch, there's no way. Oh no, I mean just <laughs> in, in this particular movie. I was I was gonna be shocked. <laughs> and why did why did Doom have to throw Jimmy through the doors? I don't know. That that yeah, that seemed a little excessive. But it, if oh, go you ahead. have to ask, <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm asking. 
But even but Jimmy was a nice guy. <laughs> that's, why he had to get, that's why he had to get tossed. <laughs> he didn't open the door fast enough, and no. that's his job. He's the doorman. There you exactly. go. Exactly. You have one um, job, Jimmy. Open the door. I see what you're getting at. <laughs> now, the biggest thing that is always between Ben Grimm and Mr. Fantastic Reed Richards is that you know Reed has never been able to cure Ben's problem, like make him not so he's not <laughs> the thing. Re, the, you know, Doom does it in this movie. He's like, hey, I just need you just have to have more power to go into the chamber, and then he <laughs> cures him, right? Yeah, which how so they were able to collect part of the star and contain it in that little apparatus. Is that what we're led to believe? I believe so. Yes. Okay. I, I feel like a rays. broken record here, but like if, <laughs> if you don't, if I have to explain it, obviously you don't get it. <laughs> no, no. There's, there's science at work here. Real science. Real science. Actual no, science. I understand that. They just never showed that they collected the storm, <laughs> which by the way, looked a whole lot like the uh, Phoenix Force. It does look a lot like the Phoenix Force, but I so, can't say that. Uh, why, why not? Oh, I guess you could. That is Fox. It was Fox at the time, which yeah. which was a deleted scene where Mister Fantastic makes him makes his own makes his face look like uh, uh, Wolverine, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Oh, because if it he says he has seven hours, and then all of a sudden it's seven minutes, the only thing that would be able to speed up is something that was almost sentient to be able to like, Hey, there's these people I need to turn into the four elements. I'm on my way. I feel like I re- if I remember correctly, there's, there's a deleted scene uh, where it turns out that doom actually lied. He like, he lied on the, the numbers. He, he knew the seven, it was coming in seven minutes, not seven hours, but he wanted, he wanted the, the station to get hit by the rays. He wanted to turn into metal. (laughs) Well, he just wanted to be able to collect the energy. Well, but if he wanted to be able to collect the energy, it would have made more sense that they'd show some way for him to collect it. But Reed is the one that came up with the numbers in the movie. True. I, I, I just, I'm just saying, I, it yeah. might be the reason. Why, they might have cut it out and they altered the way everything w- worked in the movie. They edited it to make it look like Reed, so that Reed screwed up. Yeah. Brilliant point, Garrett. Two-minute rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> but in the beginning, Doom even said, Reed's always right. See? Always right. Which also goes towards the like this weird thing that they kept having, like this back and forth science battle of like what happens when you do this to this what happens when rubber is super cooled <laughs> because know. what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning i was <laughs> just about to ask that question <laughs> i feel like that was the wrong lesson to take from the first x-men movie uh, <laughs> i don't gonna think gonna so take any lines you shouldn't have done taking that one <laughs> what's the other line that you take from that one of saber lines sure intensely mm-hmm. at the camera <laughs> you're a dick that's the that's the line that from the first x-men movie that's fair or um just take the it's not a line from it but take like the uh the stage direction from the script where senator kelly dissolves into water <laughs> splashing noise <laughs> and then sue just went away <laughs> oh. uh, but as they came together at the end as the fantastic four they figured out that they have to work together to 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 make it work um like it, it for all the faults of the movie i still enjoyed it i still thought it was a good movie so if this movie was made today uh-huh obviously several things would not have happened um, but they would have found a way to cross this over with the Fast and Furious franchise because it's about family. <laughs> it's true. That's true. And fantastic, Fast Furious, fantastically four? furious, <laughs> much better. Or well the fast, done. or just the Fast Four. 
There you go. That one already happened. Yeah, but that was that was fast five. <laughs> that was fast five. This is the fast four. Like people are going to get really confused because really it's number 10 in the series or number 11 at this point. But like, you know, if you know, you know. And it's not even, so, it doesn't even happen uh, at the point in the timeline that it's supposed to be. This is actually like a third prequel. <laughs> so the terrific three took your drift? That's right. Yes. <laughs> and also Han. And also Han. Aww. <laughs> no, he, you don't have to be. Oh, uh, that's right. He, he's alive still. He, he I was going to say, at that again. point in the story, he's still alive. That's the only thing about that franchise I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he died at the end. He does in three. The, he does die at the end of three, but it's also in the middle of seven and at the, at the beginning of eight. <laughs> <laughs> so Han's a mutant. He's immortal. Or it's at the end of six and the beginning of seven. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so when we're done with Marvel movies, we're gonna we're gonna sit down and review all of the Fast and the Furious movies, right? I mean, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> I've, I've only seen the first one. What? I just rewatched the first one not too long ago. <laughs> Oof. I've oh. only I've actually I'm a liar. I saw the second one because Ludacris was in it. <laughs> <laughs> I will rewatch those movies in total, like every other year. So, I mean, at least that one has a definite that that series has a definite end to it, Mitch. Does it though? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're not going to have to wait two years to get the next installment. True. Yeah, we can, we can always rely on a summer Fast and Furious release. Yeah, it's true. We will get it. We will be, it will be either Fast and the Furious regular or Hobbs and Shaw or you know <laughs> what other other spinoff they're going to get after the next one. Like there's going to be it's going to be the whole Fast and the Furious cinematic universe, and I'm here for it. Well, they it's going to be one for the ladies, the slow and the sensual. Ooh, that one is just uh, it, it's actually where they cross over with Magic Mike, but it's only. It's only Dom dancing for two hours. <laughs> you know, this last one, nine, like, I think Vin Diesel's age is really showing. Like, I mean, he's he's in much better shape than I am at, at uh, what, 20 years younger? But, like, or I'm probably not 20, probably like 10 years younger. But still, it's, it's, it's showing. That like, means his family powers are fading. That's right. I think that CGI is doing a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So what's the toy? I know what mine is. Mine is the Dr. Doom chemistry set. Hmm. Could be cool. It's all about metal. Ooh. It comes with like magnesium. <laughs> and and like like electrodes or something. <laughs> and mercury because every kid needs to get exposed to mercury. <laughs> There you go. Just put a little bit on your gums. Just rub it in there real good. <laughs> it's so delicious. <laughs> Garrett, what's your what's your toy? Uh I want the snowbank uh jacuzzi. <laughs> I like that the two of them just jump into the or the lady just jumps into the jacuzzi even though like there shouldn't be a jacuzzi here. Like there should be. And Maria no is like, hey, why is this water here? Oh, well, let's have fun. <laughs> Let alone, like, he sexually assaulted, kissed her, like, earlier in the movie. <laughs> like, just straight <laughs> her without her, you know, consent. Ian? Uh, I think How do you mine, follow that up? Uh, I can't follow that up. There's no, there's no <laughs> meme to be made after that one. Um... <laughs> I do one thing on this show, and that's provide <laughs> memes. You robbed me of it. Uh, no, I think the toy set that I would want would be, um, I think it would be the space station. Ooh, oh, like it, you'd you'd have to buy all of the figures separately and get a piece of the space station. Either you get a piece of the space station, or you buy the space station, and that comes with Doom. But oh. if you want the rest of them, you have to buy the rest of them separately. No, you still have to buy Doom separately. If you get the space station, you get Doom's like assistant guy. <laughs> 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 yeah, there we go. 
if if we can't do that one, um, I want <laughs> I want a, uh, a a human torch on a dirt bike uh, <laughs> remote control. Oh, if you I like drive it. it, if you can drive it in a straight line fast enough, it will catch on fire. No, 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 <laughs> no it's got to be like the old evil Knievel like crank toy. Yeah, <laughs> yes. but, but you light it on fire first. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because children should play with gasoline too. Yeah, yep. uh, so you, you get actually you get a better result if you already have the the, the von doom medical like metal chemistry set and you just mix all of you actually it teaches you how to make thermite there you go i love it <laughs> so you make your thermite pour that over the over the human torch motorcycle and that's what powers it <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember the the old like Dan Aykroyd SNL sketch when he was on the talk show and he was the toy like manufacturer guy and, and like she's like, "What toys are for Christmas this year?" And he goes, oh, "The new one is bag of glass." <laughs> and she's like, "It's just a bag of glass." It's a sack of rusty nails. It's a sack of rusty nails. Uh. <sighs> All right. So, what would you like to see from this show up in our upcoming Fantastic Four movie? I would like to just see a f- upcoming Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> I mean, you have two more coming, like just in our show alone. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait till we get to Fan Four Stick, and you're going to appreciate this movie so much more. <laughs> I mean, I already do, <laughs> but Fan Four Stick is a trash pile, <laughs> <laughs> a burning trash pile. <laughs> they took a fantastic cast and reduced it to nonsense. <laughs> Garrett, anything? No. <laughs> That's I mean, fine. Well, you know, I take that back. We need more extreme sports in Marvel movies. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, we should. Uh, we Marvel needs to start <laughs> pushing the X Games again. Jeez. And, <laughs> and jumping out of helicopters with uh, snowboards. With Maria yes. Menudos. <laughs> with Maria Menudos. <laughs> um, we need. If the the space storm actually was the Phoenix Force, uh, we need the Phoenix Force to show up in the MCU. Because I mean, if they're not gonna say that mutants came back with the snap or from the sudden creation of the multiverse, um, I mean, the Phoenix Force could show up and just be like, "Surprise! Everybody's irradiated. Mutants exist now." <laughs> <laughs> mutants. Um, <laughs> You know, I I want more like angry celestial nonsense in this <laughs> in this upcoming phase, which I think we're gonna get. I think, even that we're yeah. looking at like the Eternals and stuff like that, we should be looking towards space a little bit more. Yeah, I think that I think that's a good call. Uh, I I really enjoyed the the like. Everybody getting waking up from the accident in the space station and uh, like not having their powers yet, but then like slowly getting them. Like I think that's yeah. the thing that I enjoyed from this that I wouldn't mind seeing a play on in in the future. The one thing I don't want them to do with that, because every single time we've seen this happen now, um. I don't want to see Reed Richards just like fall apart again. Because oh. like we get it. You don't know why your body's stretchy. <laughs> I'm assuming that the the whatever uh the MCU version of the Fantastic Four is, we're not gonna get another origin story. I think we're just going to get the Fantastic Four, just like we got Spider Man. We didn't get the origin story for Spider Man with Tom Holland. We just went into Spider Man. Yeah, we don't need it. We've seen it. 
twice already, three times. Three times. Count 95. Yeah. If you, is it 95 or 94? I always forget. 94. 94. Mid-90s Fantastic Four that nobody Ro- saw. Roger Corman's yeah. Fantastic Four. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. There it is. That's Fantastic Four from 2005. Garrett, where can people find you online? I am at Twitter at ROTT underscore 48 and Twitch at the same. And just a heads up, this Saturday, Saturday morning, I will be doing a Twitch stream on the Geek Elite Media channel, uh, which is, what is that, Mitch? It's twitch.tv slash Geek Elite Media. There you go. <laughs> so I will be playing a game called Close to the Sun, a steampunk thriller, first person thriller. Ooh. So it's going to be kind of a I, I might be depending on my schedule doing these more often it will be kind of a backlog of the games i've been collecting on pc and this is one i've been wanting to, to take care of for a while nice. so please join me it'll be uh it's zero five arizona time Zero five. five so that's five sorry, o'clock. Five a.m. Five a.m. <laughs> for normal people. Sorry about that. People yeah. who don't work in the, with the military. <laughs> yes. Ian, how about yourself? So y'all can usually find me over twitch.tv slash Ian Flux. You can hit me on Twitter at Ian Flux twelve, Instagram at Ian Flux. I'm even over on the old TikTok at Ian Flux um, because branding is important. So. With that, come say hey, come hang out. We're going to have a great time. On Fridays, I actually run a show over on the Geekly Twitch channel. Mitch, Mitch what's that called? It's <laughs> oh, Mitch thank you. TV slash Geekly Media. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I run a D&D game over there that is a lot of fun with the one and only uh, Mitch himself on the cast. And it's a lot of fun. We love our southern gentleman thief who has yet to steal anything uh, he's the only thing the only thing he's stolen is our hearts there it is uh, so come hang out it's a great time um yeah and mitch where can people find you and so like a couple questions here where can they find you do we have a patreon for geekly media and if we do have a patreon should they or should they not ask about the muppet adventures <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to talk to me uh you can find me on twitter i am at mitchipedia g-e-m g-e-m stands for geekly media uh the rest of geekly media is at geekly media on twitter at geekly media on instagram and facebook.com forward slash geekly media is our facebook page check out archives of the archive archived episodes of this <laughs> podcast and other podcasts on our network on our website geeklymedia.com and do please go to patreon.com slash geekly media to be one of our patrons where you can get exclusive uh, material that only is available to our patrons, which could be if you're on the right tier, telling us to come up with our own cast of Muppets as Avengers, or if you really want Avengers as Muppets, like we'll Ooh, go the other way too. That could be fun. That's way too easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, hit me right Muppets now. as Avengers. Who's Beaker? Who does Beaker play? No, no who, like if, which, if which the Avengers, Avengers plays are Muppets, who's Beaker? <laughs> the, no, because you just turned the Avengers into Muppets. <laughs> but we're turning not, the other way. Not Muppet characters that exist. No. <laughs> you, <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to get the Avengers <laughs> to play the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, well, the Bruce Banner is Beaker. No. Not Professor you, Honeydew? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Stark. It's uh it's um Michael Pena's character from Luis. Luis is Beaker. Like No, Luis is uh uh the the rat. Uh Rizzo? Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow that. Does that make uh <laughs> does that <laughs> No, stop. They need to pay for this. That's yeah, right. yeah, they That's totally do. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that makes Paul Rudd Gonzo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the only obvious choice. Uh, and whatever podcatcher you use to listen to us, please rate and review us. It helps spread the word of our network. But until next time, this is Journey into Mystery on the Geek Elite Media Network saying always remember to 
Geek, Geek out. out. This concludes our broadcast.